Hello everyone. Apologies for coming late. I promise you I was here before many of you. But I forgot my ID card. I realized that getting into Vert without an ID card is harder than getting into the USA. So <laughs> I had to be smuggled in here. So don't tell the security guards that I'm in here, okay? <laughs> It was a nightmare, honestly. But I'm glad I finally made it. Uh, I'm here. Um, as you've been told, my name is Nikki Verd. Anyone here read my book or heard about me? I uh, have a copyright here. Disrupt yourself or be disrupted. No one. Oh, wow. I always think I'm very famous, you know. <laughs> but apparently I'm not. <laughs> So anyway, now you know. Next time when you see, when someone asks, do you know Nikki Ved, you'll be like, yeah, now I know her, right? So yeah, my, my story is quite different. Apologies, I could not hear. I wasn't here earlier to be able to hear the stories of the other speakers. Uh, but my journey is quite different. And as mentioned in the introduction, I used to work in the corporate world. I still do, but in a different way. Uh, and then I got retrained in 2016. And I did not see the retrenchment coming. So one morning I went to work like a normal day and my boss called me in for a meeting. I thought it was a meeting to just bring him up to speed. But by the end of that meeting, I was jobless. And to say that was one of the most difficult periods of my life would be an understatement. I did not know what to do from there. And I actually had a few people in mind I thought qualified for retrenchment, not me. You know, I was like, hey couple of you know you here been here forever I'm just starting why me you know I was that entitled <laughs> but as time went on my frustration and my anger it, it translated into some sort of curiosity where I started asking questions as to how do organizations continue to thrive when they let go so many people you know for me it became like when you buy a particular mark of car you start seeing that car everywhere. Now I've been retrenched. It was like every news on TV was about retrenchment. So as it kept jumping on me, becoming very curious about that. So I was asking questions as to why? Why are so many people being retrenched? How do organizations continue to thrive? And for the first time, I came across, literally, I went on Google and actually typed that question, how do organizations continue to thrive when they let go so many people? Initially, maybe I just wanted to know how my boss was coping without me, you know? So, but that question led me into the path in which I am today. And for the first time I came across, you know, concepts like artificial intelligence. I came across concepts like, you know, automation. And I was like, wow, now I know. So processes that used to be done by humans, many of them now can be done by machines. Okay, now I know why I easily got rid of me. But somehow I became very fascinated by the whole idea of disruption and, you know, the future of work. And I just started, you know, dug myself into that rabbit hole. Somehow just got deeper and deeper. And I started writing about it on social media. Not thinking anything will come of it. Remember, I'm jobless. I have enough time in my hands. So <laughs> I'm, all these findings, I'm just throwing it out on social media. And people became very fascinated by it. Some were asking me, oh, Nikki, what is this all about? As though now I was a tech person. But mind you guys, prior to this, the only technology I knew was to sit on my laptop, send emails at work and answer phone calls. Nothing beyond that. But I'm here writing about my findings about technology and the impact in the workforce, writing it about it on social media and getting tons of questions as though I was an expert in this field and I knew nothing. And I'm thinking to myself, if only you guys know I'm just as clueless as you. <laughs> But I became very fascinated and at some point I thought to myself, I think someone should write a book about this. But in a million years, I didn't think that someone would be me because I thought you need to be really smart to write a book, right? And I was like, there's no way, that's not me. But when an idea has taken hold of you and you don't do it, you become sort of miserable. So the idea to write a book did not leave me. You know, months, I kept pushing it away. Months after months, eventually I was like, okay, I'm going to write the book. And I thought, what better title than disrupt yourself or be disrupted because I was here minding my business and my boss disrupted my life. So I wanted people to start thinking to themselves, OK, if you're a student, whatever you are currently studying in school, by the time you graduate, it is still going to be relevant for the marketplace. If you are working, can you be replaced by a robot? Those are questions many people don't think, you know, to ask themselves, but they're uncomfortable questions. But I thought 
if you find start you know putting yourself in that path of disruption willingly you can navigate it better than for it to be dropped on you you know like it was on me i didn't see it coming so if you can start asking yourself certain questions what i'm studying is it relevant can i be replaced by software how is technology changing my industry maybe you're in finance maybe you're in agriculture whatever you are find out exactly how is the tech how are new technologies disrupting and impacting my industry what new skills do i need you know to stay relevant i wanted to drive that conversation so that many people who are not thinking or being futuristic can start being futuristic about their careers and about their futures and all of that and i'm glad that somehow i achieved that because many of those conversations are happening now I remember during covid people would ask me did you see into the future I was like I wish I did I didn't you know I just wrote sort of from what my story unfolded and I wrote a book so one of the key things that as I'm sharing my story that I would want many of you to take from here is that we are slowly transitioning from um a degree based economy so to say to a skill based economy so many things that in the past you could not have access to without a degree and without coming from a certain prestigious uh, university and things like that many people can now have access to that and i can tell you from my own experience okay i'm sitting here speaking to students or undergraduate or graduate and i don't have a degree so to say okay so i have been able to speak at many of the big companies in south africa including standard bank absa unilever and many of the top companies to speak to their employees about this those are assets and doors i could never have gone into to speak without having a certain level of education i have been invited by the african union in nairobi to come and speak about the impact of the, of the fourth industrial revolution those are opportunities i could never access without a university degree so what i need you to understand is that as you are graduating and living and facing the world of work you need to be like oh okay it was great thank you for the certificate it's almost like you're starting from zero you are starting from zero because if all you are going to bring to the table is a certificate you are not going to survive in the real world because the real world is looking for what problems can you solve now what solutions are you bringing to the table what skills do you have now that an organization can use right now but for many students all they have is their degree and i can see here someone who do not have that degree but have built myself up taught myself about the industry about the, the tech industry teaching myself certain things that no classroom perhaps would have taught me but i took that upon myself to teach myself so continuous self learning is one of the main skills in the digital world that we are living if you don't have an ability to continuously learn without someone having a stick to your head did you do your homework if you don't have that ability then you are not going to survive in the real world because once you graduate there is not going to be a teacher running after you or a professor running after you did you do your homework did you do the, did you do that but the skills the world is changing so fast that by the time you even take a four year degree and by the time you graduate with that four year degree things would have moved so fast that that degree may not be relevant so continuously learning is one of the things that you need to keep in mind that education is not ending now as you are as you are leaving university as you step out there that is going to be a, the beginning and a completely new world so learning real life skills is one of the things that you need to 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 start working on soft skills like your ability to communicate your ability to work in a team those are more crucial now than ever before and i tell people communication is no longer just going to be about my ability to communicate to another human being it's no longer just going to be about your ability to communicate with another human beings but your ability to communicate with ai systems as well anyone here explore chat gpt so far or any of the generative ai softwares if you are so bad in communication with people that is just as bad as you're going to be with generative ai and that's just how you're going to get horrible results out of it so communication is moving beyond your ability to communicate with a human being but also with your ability to communicate with ai systems are we understanding so those are some of the thing key things that you need to keep in mind and also there are a lot of people worried about um ai stealing jobs and ai replacing people at work i remember one of my talks at uh, with the um, team at, at APSA, I was telling the team that, listen, you're, you're worrying about the wrong thing. 
Stop worrying about whether AI will replace your work or all of this. But worry about your colleague who is understanding how to interact with these software systems, who is learning generative AI, who is learning how they can 10x their productivity using generative AI. Worry about that your colleague who is using all of these platforms and learning all of these skills. That is the person who is going to replace you at work, not AI. So if you are able to learn all of these new things that are arising, you're going to be able to do the work of 10 people, you alone. Think about that. You turn extra productivity when you partner with artificial intelligence. So many people who are worried about artificial intelligence are worrying about the wrong thing. Worry about your ability to partner or to, you know, collaborate with this system. If you are able to collaborate with AI, there's nothing that can replace you. AI will only replace lazy people. AI will not replace thinkers. AI will not replace creative people. AI will not re replace continuous learners because con AI need partnership with human beings. AI on its own cannot work. So if you are able to find that problem within an organization or within your own life and solve and sell, and sell the solution, then there is no way you'll be replaced. There's no way you're going to become obsolete. So these are some of the things that you need to keep in mind as you're getting out there into the world of work. So many people are worried about the wrong thing. You know, and one of the things as you're getting out there, do not just present your CV that, oh, here's my CV. I just graduated. I'm still fresh from university. Employ me. No. Whoever you are targeting to work, for whatever organizations you're targeting to work for, come with solutions. Look for whoever you want to work for. Find out what are the problems within this organization and present solutions. Try to network. Find out who within this company you can network with and offer a solution. I found one, two, three. I've been following your, 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 your business online or whatever, and I found this solution. I thought maybe you could, you could take a look at this. Don't just present your CV. Present a solution. Networking is different. A lot of people are just doing DM me, 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 me. Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Can you look at how you can offer value to someone? So do not just apply, uh, approach organizations the traditional way. Approach it with some sort of solutions. Do your research. Do your homework. Where can you add value? What can you do differently? Those are some of the things that I want you to keep in mind. All right. So the next point that I want you to keep in mind is that your personal brand is important. When we talk of personal branding, people start thinking of big influencers, right? And TikTok dancers and all of that. No. Even as an employee, your personal brand is important. And is there anyone in this room who is not on social media? Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, anybody here who is not? Oh, you, you're not on any of the social media platforms. Oh, that's interesting. It therefore means you are starting at zero. <laughs> You are actually starting at zero. And for everyone who is here, if you are on any of the social media platforms, you have a personal brand. Whether you agree to that or not, that's just the reality. But the question is, are you intentional about building your social media brand? I mean, your personal brand? Because there is no organization today that is going to employ anybody without checking them out on social media. I think the last point will be networking. Networking is very important. Okay. How many of you are on LinkedIn? Oh, okay. That's quite a good number. If you're not on LinkedIn, please get on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is not the place where CVs go to die, okay? <laughs> because some people, they just open that account and they post whatever they post there and they don't ever go back there. That is just it, like some sort of um, a barrier ground for some people. But that is where decision makers are. That is where the important people are. I remember when my book was published, I went on LinkedIn. I had had an account there, you know, was where my CV went to die back then. I wasn't doing anything there, but when my book came out, I started feeling like I, I needed a platform where I could share my thoughts about this. And Instagram did not work for me. The thought of having to take pictures every day and post on Instagram gives me so much anxiety. It's not even funny. And I thought of Twitter at the time. I was like, no. The words are too short. As you can see, I can talk, right? So um, by the time I'm thinking of what to say, they say the character, I'm out of characters. So in, Twitter for me was not the space. I thought of Facebook is too social. Like It's just like, hey, hi. I, I was like, no, I need to try LinkedIn. But when I jumped on LinkedIn, oh my God, I was terrified. Everyone is, there's a CEO, there's a general manager, there is a founder. 
there is a director, a chairman of the I don't fit you. I'm, I'm an author. Where, where, do, where do I write that? So I ran away from LinkedIn, but I needed a place where I could express myself. So eventually I went back on LinkedIn and I started building my personal brand on LinkedIn. That's the only platform that I'm actually very active on is LinkedIn. And believe you me, that is the platform that has actually taken my brand to places that I never thought possible is LinkedIn. So if you really want to get in touch with serious people who main business, get on LinkedIn, unless you're in fashion, okay? Instagram, cool, I understand. It, different things for different people, okay? But LinkedIn is important. That's where you meet decision makers. That's where you meet authentic relationships. That's most of the toxicity on different um, social media, it doesn't exist on LinkedIn, okay? And when you meet, not that there are no scammers there, they still exist, you know, but not on a high range like in other platforms. So get on LinkedIn, optimize your profile to the maximum and make sure you, you start um, engaging, you know, with some of the top accounts on, on LinkedIn and post content, share your thoughts. What field are you coming from? Are you from finance? Start sharing things around that, you know. Are you passionate about cl climate change? Start sharing things around that. Whatever you're passionate, LinkedIn is the place for you. The more you share, the more you get active, the more visibility you get. I was last week when I had well, one of my live um, interactions uh, on, on LinkedIn, one of the, one one guy in the audience who is based in the UK, I think, came up and shared his story. He said, when he, when he was in school, he used to work for a particular. He used to work as a cleaner in a particular organization. And when he finally graduated from university, he ended up working in that organization now full time as a full time employee. And he used to be so ashamed of that story. Eventually, we shared his story on LinkedIn. It went viral, and many of the HR people started head hunting him just because of one story he shared. So whatever you feel that. This thing, I don't want to expose it to nobody. I never used to tell anybody I don't have a degree. I'm like, oh my God, they're going to find out I'm a fraud. And that is the story that has actually expanded my brand, okay? And has given me the authenticity to be able to stand and say, this is who I am. And I am self-taught and you can do the same. So get on LinkedIn, share your story, share your experiences. How was university life like? What are your aspirations? What are you passionate about? Share those things out there. The more you share, the more chance you have at expanding so it's still again part of your personal branding right because when you build a personal brand it means that if you have to change careers you will never start at zero that is the power of a personal brand the moment you have to switch careers the moment you have to move from one company to the other your personal brand becomes your savior so it is important don't just post things gossip who is dating who, who divorced who, who broke up with who, all of that is not going to add value to your life, okay? If you want to be serious about your future, get on LinkedIn and start providing real value to your audience, to the connections, and expose yourself. The time you waited and send a generic CV and hope that people will call you, that time is over. The more visible you are with your personal brand online, the more chances you have at getting that job you're going to be looking for. I could carry on forever. So if there are any questions, I will take them now. Thank you.